Hello, Michael. Hello, Dean. How are you there? And welcome to uh, Dornbush Download for this week. Interest rates, Michael. All got cut yesterday. Unbelievable. It was had a dramatic effect on the market too, didn't, didn't, didn't it? Didn't it? Um, and we've seen it worldwide now. Of course, you know, the European Central Bank uh, bringing yep. out their stimulus package. Um, Obama with his four trillion dollar US budget and tax reform package. Yes. Uh, and of course, now yeah, our Reserve Bank basically following suit. Uh, interest rates dropping quarter of percent, two point two five record lows. Um, Amazing, isn't it? And we'd had such a, a, a period of stable interest yeah. rates. You know. Yeah. August uh, 2013, last time we saw an interest wow. rate cut. That's been um, a long time. So, yeah, so the market re reacted very positively to that. Um, I, I see a couple of banks are now starting to pass those um, through already. Looks um, like Commonwealth was the first big one to make the move. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. So. But it's all about growth, isn't it? You know, why get our exchange rate down? I think that's where the RBA is sort of targeting it. Why should we have high interest rates when yeah. the rest of the world doesn't have very high rates at all? Yeah. You know, make, make our commodities and our um, other exports more attractive to the rest of the world. Yeah, very true. Yeah, RBA is still very concerned about future growth prospects yes. and also um, uh, high unemployment as well. Yes. So that along with the yeah, low commodity prices, certainly the belief is our exchange rate, even at 76, 77, is still too high. Yeah. So. And funnily enough, you know, inflation, they would rather have some inflation than deflation. So yeah, they're saying inflation's too low, so they want to push that up a bit as well. Yeah, so. Absolutely. It's just a continual juggling act, isn't it, to try, yeah. to try and keep yeah. it right. So. I'm glad he's got the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what are you buying at the moment, Dan? Well, well, just on the back of those free trade agreements and and the lower exchange rate. I'm looking at Bega Cheese at the moment. Um, they had a market cap around $1.6 billion. Mm. And, and they really came into focus when Warnable Cheese was eventually taken mm. over by that Canadian company, Sapato. Bega netted about $66 million out of trying to take Warnable Cheese over themselves. And that's mm. left them in a net cash position. So I just wonder whether at some stage Bega may be a takeover target as well. Trading at about five dollars an eight, you know, maybe an entry is around four dollars eighty, four dollars yeah. ninety. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about yourself, Mike? Yeah, Dan, I'm, I'm still liking Santos. Yeah. Um, it's been one that we've mentioned um, uh, on the download in the past. Um, I think, uh, and of course, to a little bit of history, um, you know, share price got slaughtered after the uh, oil price dropped dramatically. Oil price seems to have stabilised, but you know, of course, we're not out of the woods yet, and anything could still happen there. But uh, latest production results from uh, Santos, they're still on track to make, uh, well, produce about. 54, 55 million barrels of oil equivalent. Yep. Amazing. About four billion in in revenue. They've got the the PNG LNG um, um, interest. You know yeah. about thirteen percent in that project, which has got ships in the water, and of course the GLNG, which uh, hopefully you know gets ships in the water towards the end of this year. So uh, Santos for mind uh, still uh, worth a, a bit of a stab at, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, certainly suggesting a, a tight stop loss on those guys if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're keen. And, and yeah, they're certainly still not for the faint-hearted. No, no. Anything you're selling, Dan? Or? I'm really looking at Tabcorp, Michael. They've had a solid run since, uh, I suppose, October. Yeah. Um, you know, they need to increase their dividends by about seven, per seven cents this year to get up to around that 5% yield. Yeah. Um, if they're not going to do that, perhaps, you know, worth when they go ex-dividend in this reporting season, maybe taking some profits out yeah. of those, looking for something else. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm suggesting taking uh, some profits out on a Domino's Pizza. Uh, share yeah. prices performed extremely well in the last few years. Um, their expansion into Japan has also worked very well for them. Um, but on a PE at the moment of 32 times, it's pretty high, isn't uh, yeah, it? EPS, yeah, uh, EPS growth expected to be about 24%. So that, that mixture of the two, the, the price earnings growth ratio at a bit over one. So looking a bit top heavy for yeah. me. So uh, There are a few starting to look fully priced, aren't there? There are, yeah. yeah. Certainly some of those valuations starting to look a bit stretched. So, yeah. of course, if they don't meet those earning expectations, you know, there's a fair bit of fat in the share price there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And <laughs> we'll get a bit leaner, won't it? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, week ahead, look, uh, again, a bit of an extraordinary week on the economic front, but uh, pr probably uh, in the US uh, we'll be looking at uh, non-farm payroll figures. Uh, non-farm payrolls have uh, basically been growing about um, by about 245,000 per month in the US last year. Expectation is for a little bit lower than that, around about 225,000. Um, but again, the signs still are there. Still good numbers. Yeah, the signs are there that the US economy is still rolling along pretty yeah. well. 
Well, no. that's good. Um, next week, though, we're looking at more reporting. Commonwealth Bank, Suncorp, uh, Rio, CSL, I think, and Telstra are the, probably the bigger companies reporting next week, ones to keep an eye out for. Yeah, they're yeah, really starting to get cranked up next week, aren't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, and um, see you next week. Thank you.